Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Hearts Round 4 as we are playing with Metsuko. Alright, so uh, in today's episode, I guess before we start I should show that I did change a few names here based on your guys' suggestions. So the main infantry division is going to be named the Jaguar Warriors. And then our garrison divisions, which we'll likely use uh, for defensive purposes, particularly up along the, the U.S. border, uh, once we are, you know, expanding this way, which will likely be de uh, beginning soon, they're going to be called the Narcos. Uh, I have not seen the Narcos Mexico season on Netflix. I've watched the first two seasons of Narcos, the, the original Narcos. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I never saw the third season, though. I've been meaning to watch that one first before I start the Mexico one. And I uh, just haven't had time, so uh, fortunately I haven't seen the Metsuko one, and I heard it's pretty good, so I do need to watch it at some point. Maybe now would be a good time to watch it since we're playing as Metsuko. Uh, so let's go ahead and start getting ready for this conflict, because I've decided that I think it would be best to try and expand down here before the Americans get that focus, because they could go for it at any minute. Um, we, we've seen before that they're, they're going for the Federal Housing Act. We know that they're going for the... Uh, the direction, the neutrality direction uh, on their focus tree. But really, you've seen that they've mostly been focusing on those war plans. I think we've seen maybe three focuses uh, where they're in that war plans uh, branch, which that, I believe, uh, is where the Monroe Doctrine, the Confirm the Monroe Doctrine, focuses. So they could go down that at any time. Uh, and if they did, not only would they, uh, you know, be able to interfere with any wars we did down here and, and potentially uh, you know, back up these guarantees that they have. Uh, but in addition to that, that branch also leads to the focus that gives them bonuses against Mexico. And I think it's like War Plan Green or something like that. So something to consider. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this war now. Uh, and I mean, obviously we still have to uh, get the war goal, which I think it was 125 days, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start working on it now. And then we're going to go ahead and build out an army, which will probably be most of these divisions, but not all of them. Maybe like uh, 15. I don't know how many they have. Uh, I looked and it said something like 3 to 19, so it's pretty wide open there because we don't really have much intel. Uh, so basically, we have no idea how many we're going to need. So we'll just do 15 and, and leave a few divisions up north. This is obviously not going to be enough, but that's okay. Uh, let's go and just start a new army here. And we will go ahead and change up their colors. And uh, we'll go with red here. And let's go with, I always go with the red heart, spread and love, but we'll do something different. We'll do this one here. All right, uh, we can go ahead and get general, uh, general assigned, and a field marshal. As far as generals go, we have gotten a lot from uh, some of the, the focuses and events. So we do have quite a few options. They are all level three, so that's the highest level that we have. Uh, we're kind of probably going to want one with a high attack, and you see that we have two here at the top with high attack ratings. Uh, also, one with supply. Uh, I think we'll probably go for maybe this guy here. Yeah, I think he would be the good good option. He has a little bit better in defense than this guy, but but lacks a little bit in the supply department. Uh, but most importantly, he has the infantry officer. So I think that would be a, a good one to have. As far as traits, we don't really have very good traits here for our generals. Uh, they're pretty generic. Uh, let's go ahead and get a field marshal. We do have a solid field marshal, of course, in Cedillo, uh, since we did not arrest him and he is going to be our field marshal uh, because he does start with a trickster uh, so as far as like comparing him here he has a little bit lower defense also lower uh, planning and lower supply consumption in exchange for the attack his attack is much higher uh, but let's go ahead and give him some traits uh, I think we're gonna go with the offensive doctrine while I am tempted to do do defensive I think the other field marshal will be focused on the defensive stuff uh, so let's go ahead and get, um, well, we can also go for Charismatic. That'd be really nice to have, too. You know what? This is what we're going to do. Let's go for Charismatic, and then if we have another one, which we do, then we'll go for the Offensive. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, excellent. So we've got our Field Marshal in control here, and then what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and give a different Field Marshal here, I think. And I think that's probably the best way to do this. And we could even do a new theater if we wanted to. Um, let me see how we want to do this. Let's just put them in the same theater for right now. And we'll go ahead and get our defensive field marshal in charge here and upgraded with the defensive doctrine. That's uh, more max entrenchment. And then the division recovery rate. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so he'll be in charge up here. 
Uh, and we could also change up his icon, the icons and stuff for this army. Maybe we'll keep him with the shield. And I guess they'd be purple, since Phil Marshall already has Phil, uh, the purple color there. And we should probably give him a general too, might as well. And we'll give him our highest defensive general, which I believe is Trevino. Trevino, I guess that's how you pronounce that. He's our best defensive general, so he'll be in charge there. Uh, so with the Red Army, let's go ahead and put these guys in charge here. And give them planning bonus, all that good stuff. Alright, so I think we're ready to go. I did want to build one more unit up here. Because that would get us up to a total of 24 divisions. Uh, we don't really have the equipment, of course, for him, but that's okay. Uh, Paris has fallen. France has capitulated. Uh, so Germany has already won there. Uh, they just need to wipe out the rest of the Allied troops that are still in France. Likely mostly British troops there. Also successful invasion here of Norway by Italy, in fact. Not the Germans. Interesting. Uh, so, and the death of Rudolf Hess. Uh, so things are, again, happening pretty close to history. A little bit... Uh, quicker though, uh, obviously France has fallen. Look, I mean, they just they just plowed through all of their enemies. Uh, Germany is incredibly overpowered now. In a way, uh, it feels like they might do a little bit too well. Uh, and I did want to change up something. They, they seem to do really well uh, quickly, and then they fall apart later. Uh, and obviously, that's like kind of how you want uh, the AI Germany to work. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's a little bit too much. Like, they, they uh, are too powerful in the beginning, and they fall apart too easily in the middle and end. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and prioritize reinforcements, and deprioritize garrisons, and of course our units here. And we'll get this war goal done in the 3rd of February, 1940. So that's when we're going to be declaring war. Uh, we can see how many divisions they have along the front here, and we're looking at a total of what it, 11 divisions. So it's good I sent about 15 so that we will outnumber them. Uh, we did get the uh, field hospitals knocked out. Oops. Uh, is there anything else we want to get support company wise? Uh, we could go ahead and get the next uh, signal company. I suppose that would be an option. Yeah, we're not close enough to 1940 to, to work on the 1940 techs here. Uh, let me just see what else we need. I know we need naval bombers. We can't really build them right now though because of lack of factories. Obviously need to get something here. Uh, weren't we waiting to get that until we could get the theorist? I think so. Yeah, I wanted to get that, which we're currently working on. So we won't go with uh, getting the land doctrines just yet. We'll wait a little bit since we can do it a lot quicker. Uh, what we could do is start working on the mountain troops. I would like to get some mountain divisions eventually. Uh, I, I suppose it's not really a priority since, again, we do lack uh, a few you know, few things we need, like army experience to design the, the mountain uh, divisions, as well as equipment to, to supply them. So let's just go with the Signal Company 2s make all of our support companies as good as we possibly can. Uh, so, one thing somebody asked me in the comments is, excuse me, just started coughing there, I had to put a cut right there. Uh, but anyway, asked me why I went for the cab uh, recon over the motorized recon. There's some significant differences between the two. Uh, the main thing you want to realize, of course, is that uh, the equipment's going to be different. So if you look at this here, uh, we're going to need motorized uh, equipment if we put the motorized recon companies in there. So it just makes our infantry a little bit more expensive to build because you have to get that motorized equipment for them. That's almost doubling it. Uh, so that's a lot. Also, it does require uh, fuel, and that's the biggest thing. Uh, you'll notice that they will now use fuel while normally our infantry doesn't. Uh, as far as like other stats, though, they do get better. They do have better defense and better reconnaissance. Uh, but I just don't feel like it's worth making it so that our infantry now have to have fuel and, and uh, if we don't have it then they'll have any issues. Now given I don't expect fuel to be a problem, but but overall I find it's it's just better to uh, put the cab in here uh, for these guys. So they don't require the fuel and we don't require as much of the motorized when we build them. And Japan just declared war on Communist China. I thought Communist China was in their faction, apparently they left the faction, started their own, the People's Front. And they also got a little bit of territory, it seems here. Yeah, uh, so that's the only thing that's really like causing a hole here in their faction in China. Uh, and it looks like these guys are also part of the People's Front. So Japan does still have a little bit more work to do to finish up with the conquest of China. Uh, we did get Exhibition 3. Again, we are done here. Uh, not close enough here to get the uh, improved computing machine, so we won't. Uh, let's see what else we want to get. Again, I'm looking for passive bonuses. Um, 
we, we do want to get anti-tanks eventually. I'm going to I'm gonna build both of these and put them in the units, guys. Uh, we will need anti-tanks and anti-air, excuse me, anti-air and anti-tanks against the Americans. However, we're not fighting the Americans first, so that's the reason why I didn't really prioritize those. And it's also why I'm prioritizing planes. We do want to get light tanks as well. Might stretch our uh, production capabilities right now, though. Uh, but you know what? It wouldn't hurt researching it so that we're not, like, way behind. So that's what I'm going to do while we're waiting for to get a little bit closer to 1940. We do have a, a couple of decisions available since we got up to the 75 political power. So let's take a look and see if our, any of these are something we're going to do. Now, I know that we still need to get a few things here, uh, but... These do help us increase the war support and the stability, which would be uh, critical, especially with the stability. I think we're going to do the attend public mass. I really don't like having our stability so low. I think it would be really helpful to get it higher. Uh, of course, it will improve our factory output, uh, which will allow us to get these shortages dealt with. Uh, as you guys can see, we still have significant shortages in the support and artillery while the infantry equipment is no longer as short. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull away from that and put it into support equipment to kind of make up for the shortages. That does mean that we will now have to trade for aluminum, unfortunately. We won't trade with the Soviet Union. We're going to trade with the, the Germans. We got that trade route started now. And get ourselves some, some goodies. Uh, these guys are not training. So let's go ahead and train them up. And we are going to just shift-click train them. So they only train up until they are of regular experience level. Uh, so yes, this is about our attempts to get a war goal against them and I don't know how we'll do let's take a look at how their divisions look looks like the divisions are pretty solid yeah they've they've changed up the designs there uh, and it does look like they are doing pretty good as far as like our we might need to do something different here hmm because I want the equipment prioritized going to this army so what I think what we're gonna do is go ahead and put these guys into their own theater maybe I should have did that in the first place go ahead and re-give them a field marshal and then that way we can, we'll just prioritize this one here, high priority, so that they get the equipment first rather than the six purple army divisions. I don't know if we're gonna be ready uh, when it comes to equipment in time for uh, when we get this war goal. We might have to wait uh, a month or two, you know, cause you can see that our equipment is incredibly short. Again, we're mostly lacking the artillery and the support equipment. So we have the infantry equipment that we need. We did get the heroic military college. That's going to give us all that army experience, a research bonus for the land doctrine, and of course the uh, the advisor for that. Now, that advisor is 250 political power. It's going to take a little while for us to get that. Uh, one thing I'd really like to get is this one here so we can get a new design company for the planes. We, we want to get that before we research the 1940 planes. Uh, for right now, I think we should really consider getting that political power I'm looking at other options uh, that we go. We still can't go against with this because we don't have the 40% support right now. So can't get that one yet. Uh, we could go ahead and get this one. That's two more military factories. That'd be nice to have and allow, allow us to start moving down this branch here. But again, I really feel like the political power would be super helpful to have so we could get that theorist and start working on our land doctrines. So you know what? That's what I think we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get that, and then we'll get this one. All right, excellent. So that'll knock, uh, give us about 160 political power. And I think at that point we should have enough um, to, you know, by the time we get this focus, to get that theorist. And uh, once we get him, we'll start researching the land doctrines. And sorry about a lot of vehicles going by, if you heard that. Um, but yeah, I feel like we don't quite have enough equipment here. Uh, we'll at least get these guys trained up. Yeah, we'll have them trained up by then. And so that'll be less uh, troops training and using up experience, or excuse me, using up equipment that's breaking down. We did finish up our research here, so we'll have to start building that. We are close enough to 1940 to go ahead and start working on 1940 text now. So let's go and get that research speed bonus. And let's go and upgrade this. Uh, I know that we could build these quicker if we didn't. However, I want the bonus, and you can see we're actually doing pretty well on the infantry equipment. Uh, we could even pull a factory from them, I suppose. Um, this is what we're going to do. We'll pull one factory from them, because apparently we lost a factory somehow. Yeah, uh, we lost a factory somewhere. So we're going to uh, pull that factory from the infantry equipment since we're stacked on it. Make sure it's going towards the support equipment since that's what we're lacking. Uh, so we do get this in January, right? I think it said January. Uh, February. 
Uh, so we've got about another month to try and fix our equipment shortages. Uh, we will put our planes in the air, I suppose. Uh, I guess we can take a look at that now. We only have nine planes. Um, I don't imagine they have a lot of planes. We probably won't be able to see that, though. We can take a look, though, and see if we can see anything about them. It doesn't look like they have any planes. Uh, so even ten fighters in the sky would be able to uh, control the skies and give us that bonus. So we will do exactly that. We're going to go and put both the close air support. We probably won't put the tactical bombers. I don't think they would do much over there. Uh, it's just five. Uh, so let's go and move these guys over here. We'll have them cover here. Uh, we will not put them in the sky just yet. Uh, though I think we might... Nah, we don't need to train them. There's really no point on training them considering the fact that they won't be fighting anybody so their experience will be irrelevant. They don't have any ships, right? Uh, let's take a look on, on that. Yeah, no ships. So again, should be a pretty easy conquest for the most part. Though a little bit harder than I had originally said, though, just simply because of the fact that our, our guys lack so much equipment and I don't think we'll have it fixed in time. Uh, you know, it is what it is, guys. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Oh, yes. We, did we get that infantry equipment? We did. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue getting passive bonuses, guys. Uh, so let's get the improved infantry equipment, increase our soft attack, and probably won't have that by the start of this war. Again, I do think it's going to be about a month longer, simply because of uh, the equipment shortages. I don't think it would be good for us to uh, go to war with such massive shortages. I mean, we have like 50-something percent strength for many of our units. So we might wait like an extra month. Uh, Japan did finish up the war here in China. And so now everybody is part of their faction. Okay. So uh, again, fascism is doing quite well. And we did lose our operative. And we don't have another operative to uh, replace him or to go, uh, you know, get him back. So he's going to basically sit in prison until he dies. And uh, this will be giving him intel as well. We'll be giving the Americans intel, I mean. So we finished up our justification. Uh, let me just take a look at this decision. We're not going to do anything. We need to get 250. So if this was at 100, we'd have 260 uh, when we uh, got that, that focus done, which is almost done. But not enough to spend. We need 75. So we're just going to wait. We'll just wait until we get the focus done. Again, we're not going to use our, our world just yet. We have a uh, couple months before. I think it says up over here. Yeah, we, 4th of April. So we'll probably wait until at least March. And Norway has capitulated. Just to try and get the equipment built up here. Uh, and, and I don't know that how much we'll get that done. Uh, as you can see, we're still pretty darn short in the artillery and support equipment. Yeah, pretty short. Uh, infantry equipment's doing well, though. Did get signal company twos. Uh, again, let's go ahead and continue getting passive bonuses. We don't have enough guns in our units, I think, to justify improving the artillery. I think we should probably just get the uh, bonuses for the, uh, the you know, equipment, infantry equipment. And how many more days until this is done? Uh, two more days. Uh, so we'll get that big burst of uh, political power. And so let's go ahead and go with this one to get those factories. We are really short military factories. And again, we still can't go for this uh, because we don't have the Catholic state. Hmm. We could easily get that with using that one decision, uh, but we won't have the political power for that since I'm going to get the theorist, uh, Manuel Perez Servino. And this is, of course, going to give us that army experience and then the 15% superior firepower doctrine. So it does force us to go down that route, um, but the extra 5% I feel like is worth it. And you know what? Superior firepower is, you know, it, I think it's a good direction for how our army is being designed for the most part. Uh, you could make an argument to, to go for a couple other ones, particularly Grand Battle Plan. I, I suppose you could make a good argument to go for that. Uh, so all we'd have to do is take that one decision to move over to Catholic State. But I don't think we're going to do that because we'd have to wait for the political power. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get something now. And we will get this one here to get those military factories. I think that'd be useful. All right, so we got that done. We have the theorists going. So the next research slot that we will get will be uh, invested into our land doctrines. Again, those won't help us in time for this war, of course, uh, which will kind of give us a probably significant disadvantage because I'm sure they've been working on the doctrines. The AI is programmed to to really focus on doctrines, so I assume that they'll have it. Uh, so yes, we're going to be going to war here in March. Remember, we only have till April, April 4th, so might as well wait, wait till... We could do like an April 1st attack, like April Fool's Day. Maybe they won't believe it's an attack. They'll think it's a joke. They'll hold back their men and just think that we're playing around. Maybe. Maybe it'll work. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll just wait until uh, 
until we get to the uh, April 1st. We only have 17 planes, so what we're going to have to actually do is tell these guys, we'll have to tell them to, to fly regardless of how many units they have. Uh, yeah, because the 25% the strength, that's not going to work. Uh, we'll need to do no retreat, I think. Because I don't know that they'll be at 25%. Uh, India just declared war on the British Raj, so they're going to have a civil war over here uh, between the Indian People's Republic, who is now in the Comintern. Interesting. Where the British Raj was in the Allies, so I believe this is going to start conflict between the Soviet Union and the Allies. Oh, that's not good. That is not good for uh, the rest of the world. I suppose it's good for the fascist. Uh, that's very interesting. So we'll see an early... I guess we're starting to see some things kind of go a little bit different. Greece did join the Allies when Italy declared war on them. We'll see things go a little bit different for the... Not really the first time, but the first significant uh, time uh, from history. Uh, so that's interesting. I'm surprised that we are uh, still having such significant shortages on the support equipment. We're just not building it very fast. We did fix our resource slack. Yeah, we did. Um, so the rubber is just affecting the motorized, which isn't too big of a deal. Uh, so with this one here, this is the research slot. We'll go ahead and invest towards the superior firepower. We do have research bonus for that, so we'll get it in 83 days. Very nice. And then, of course, that is uh, the, the first one there. And research is here. Uh, that first one here is going to give soft attack for all the frontline battalions. We're almost to the first. Let's slow this down just a little bit. And then, like, tax six in the morning. First thing in the morning, they won't be, they won't be expecting us. So again, I don't know how well this will go because of our lack of equipment. I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see how well it goes. Uh, let's go and put these guys in the sky now, and um, we can even do more ground crews. Though it's you know not really necessary, and that'll give us those bonuses. And uh, let's go ahead and declare war, and hope that they don't join the Allies, because that would obviously not be good. Uh, we do have a decision available, industrial land appropriation. Let's just see here where that is so I can go and say we don't need to be notified of this. Down here. There you go, excellent. All right, so we are now at war. Uh, we should probably try and bypass the mountains here and just go, come up behind them. Uh, I think that'll probably be the best way to do this. So we're gonna attack with these guys here and then support with them. Uh, we could also, hold up, what we could do is go ahead and let them attack us first if they are going to, it looks like they are not. Okay. Thought maybe they'd attack us and then we'll be able to sit on the defense and let them exhaust themselves a little bit. All right, so we're gonna turn this up to speed four since this, this should be a fairly easy war. Uh, the Greeks actually want to send us some equipment. That's surprising, but we'll take it. Let's go take a look at the Greeks. Uh, didn't they join the allies? Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not, not sure why they gave us supplies. Why they're looking at us as the uh, the one to help, uh, but we'll take it. Uh, is anybody suppli supplying them? No, no supplies here. All right, so yeah, we'll just win here and then we'll come up from behind them. Uh, they are trying to move out of here. Again, I'm not gonna attack these mountains. I don't see any point. We could attack here though. I didn't realize that that is connected. So yeah, we can go straight out the capital. So what we'll do is just deselect one of these and let's see if we can win this. Maybe, uh, we are winning there. So we'll come up around here. And again, this is gonna be a pretty easy conflict overall though. I'm, I'm surprised how many people are giving us supplies right now. Uh, but again, just a little bit longer than, than it would have been if I had uh, had a better strength situation for our units. Uh, we do have a free civilian factory, so let's go ahead and get it building. Uh, I think we finished up uh, all of the land forts for the little area that we're going to defend. Uh, we could continue building land forts, but I just wanted to have a level two so we get that 20% modifier in combat. We're gonna we're gonna have to wait to build more. That's a, a just in case, just in case something happens. For right now, we really need military factories, guys. So let's go ahead and build a mil military factory there as well as one right here. We are also short on civilian factories, apparently. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and build another civilian factory. Again, I wanna at least have one full line going. Uh, that's because we're trading, yes. I did forget about that. So we're currently trading right now, so that's the reason why we're short there. So we're gonna finish up this defense here, and then we'll attack with all these divisions. And uh, this should be the victory. Once we take this province here, we'll probably win there first, and then we'll be able to help them. And uh, then this will be the end of the conflict, and we'll We'll annex them. Kind of continue to expand our territory. And these guys keep moving. 
out of the mountains and then back down here, kind of prolonging this a little bit. It's longer than it needs to be. What we might want to do is leave one division here. Just in case they try and come up over this way, we don't want them cutting, them off, cutting us off or anything. Again, taking a little bit longer to, to get this done since I keep moving these guys. Uh, we're defending here now, and of course this is... Uh, oh, never mind. I was thinking this was in mountains or hills. Doesn't look like there's like a, a mountain right there. Apparently not. It's in the plains. It's got forest right here, a mountain right here, and uh, yet it's plains. Interesting. Okay. There we go. War is done. We got whatever equipment they had, and we're going to go ahead and annex them. All right, fantastic go. So that is granted us two military factories, two civilian factories, and two dockyards. Okay, so we must not have the dockyards. Yeah, I'm assuming we don't have the dockyards because of low compliance. Uh, so we can now look at our occupied territories for the first time, and we can also change this up so we're not using Jaguar warriors. We're still gonna instead gonna use the Cav units. They'll be better at it. So we use them, and uh, as far as policies go, I think we'll just go with civilian oversight. I don't find myself using other policies that often. Now, as for these troops here, I guess we would prepare for the next conflict uh, and have, I, I don't know which way we'd go just yet. That's 14 divisions, man. That does not feel like it's worth it to attack El Salvador. Uh, that's a lot of divisions for such a, a tiny country, uh, but again, they don't really have uh, much here to, to make it worth it. Two military factories, two civilian. I suppose it's the same. It's just not. Uh, I don't have any dockyards. Uh, as far as resources go, uh, yeah, they they even have less resources here. So uh, I think we'll get on the border with Honduras instead. Uh, now I don't think we need the full 15 divisions. We'll just go with the uh, 12 here, and then just pull three of them like the three least experienced ones, the ones who were standing up against that mountain. Bring them on over there so we have a few more divisions there. And then let's go ahead and bring these guys, put them over here. All right, excellent. So we could go and go for a, another war goal here. Again, it's gonna take us a long time before we get through here. It's kind of unfortunate, um, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that this doesn't have a bypass. It'd be really nice if we had a bypass here. Uh, but we do have to go through here. Of course, the um, you know, war goals would be nice to get it this way since these are only 35 days to knock out those. Uh, there's another reason to go down here, even if we were to conquer all this, is because I think there's one of these that grants cores. There's that Seize the Panama Canal that I talked about earlier in the in the series. Hmm. Okay, so this one grants cores in, in America. Okay, so these are the integration decisions. I see. So you actually have to take decisions in order to get the cores, as you can see here. Yeah, they're decisions. Uh, so we'll do those decisions, which will probably take political power, and then we'll get cores and all that territory. And so that's the main reason why we have to go down this way, regardless of what happens. It is very unfortunate, though, that they don't have a bypass here for if you already conquered those territories. At least they're only 35 days, though. Uh, so yeah, we could go and go to war with these guys next. Uh, they're fully democratic, though. So that could cause some issues. Uh, another thing we, we never did in that war because we didn't have the political powers, we could have changed out of, uh, changed our mobilization to uh, war economy uh, when we were at war. Although, it does look like you actually have to war, have war support at 50%, which we do not. So we might not have been able to do that. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about justifying this war goal here. It's a little bit more power, 32, and it's going to take 160 days. Uh, but I almost want to go ahead and do it just so that we can continue expanding while we can. Again, waiting for those focuses it puts us in a bad position because it's just uh, it's going to take us too long to get them. It's going to take far too long for us to get those focuses. Uh, with those three divisions, I think we should have almost every province defended along this line here. I think we're only short. We'll be short maybe two two provinces. And, oh no no, we'll be short more than that. We'll be short three provinces I think. We knocked that one out. Uh, so again, gave us two military factories we can get assigned. That'd be super helpful. Also allows us to move down the Spanish Civil War refugees, which is going to give us some research bonuses and, and more fascist and communist support. Uh, but again, our, our fascist support isn't too bad right now. It's just the problem of needing to get that uh, that Catholic state. We could wait to get that rather than... Uh, well, this is only 35 days away. Yeah, that's not that bad. Yeah, this one's 35 days too. All right, we'll get that one then. Go ahead and knock that out. 
Let's go and get these military factories assigned. Could start building the light tanks up, uh, but we should probably, you know, deal with our shortages first before we go do anything like that. Uh, so next factory will go into the artillery. You'll notice that we are short on steel now, so unfortunately we'll have to trade another civilian factory away to solve the steel issues. That's okay though. That's okay, guys. We could stop training, and I think we will. Uh, we're, we're doing pretty good army experience, and our, our main problem right now is a lack of, of military equipment. Uh, so I think it would be good to uh, just stop training for a little bit. We get this done on the 26th of September, guys. Uh, so we should have this war in this episode as well. They did cancel their lend lease, of course, since we are no longer in conflict. I expect the Greeks will cancel their lend lease soon, too. Yep, there we go. Uh, but that did help us a bit, uh, helped a little bit. Uh, Greece has capitulated, so they probably shouldn't have gave us that equipment. I think they probably could use that for themselves. Uh, but yeah, you can see that the Italians now own all of Greece. And we just have to see what happens right now. It's just the British that the Germans are at war with. Uh, I don't think there's, I mean, of course, all of their, their territories. Um, I don't think there's anybody else in that conflict. Uh, is the Soviet Union at war with the Allies? They are. Okay, so... That has started a three-way conflict, or I should take that back, actually. It's not a three-way conflict because Germany hasn't invaded the Soviet Union yet. Uh, but it will be. It will be a three-way conflict. Uh, so we did get the support weapons. Excellent. Uh, let's see what we want to get next. We could go with the mechanized again just to make the motorized better, but, you know, we don't even have motorized yet. Uh, I almost want to go for the mountain troops. If there's no other passive bonuses, that's what we'll go for. Uh, again, though, I do like prioritizing the passive bonuses for right now. Uh, I, I could go for the improved artillery. I guess that's what we could do. I think that is what we're going to do, in fact. Let's get that. Let's improve our artillery. That'll help us out in this war here. I don't know how many troops these have. Uh, these guys have, but we'll take a look real quick. See what they got. Um, not many. Not many at all. So we don't even need the 12 divisions that we have there. Uh, we got the improved infantry equipment too. All right, excellent. So again, some more nice passive bonuses here. And I think we might go for the mountain troops next. Can also go for the naval bombers so we can start getting those built. Um, let's go for the mountain troops. And then we'll take a look if we see if we can't get one of those divisions uh, built. We could just go ahead and deploy these guys, put them over here. I mean, everybody's short of equipment right now. Uh, so yeah, let's just go ahead and deploy them. We'll put them uh, here. Or you know what? It doesn't really matter. Uh, we pro probably should get them closer to the front. Uh, so let's go and deploy those. And we'll throw them into this army here. And then we'll just shift click. So just those three will, will train, since I would like to get those guys trained up. Since they are extremely uh, lacking experience. Alright, so again, a couple more months here, guys. And then we'll be able to uh, get this war started and again, just kind of increase our lands a little bit. Uh, so we did get the uh, Spanish Civil War refugees focus knocked out. Uh, gave us those research bonuses. And what do we want to get next? Um, do we have the 75 political power? We do not. Uh, so we can't do that just yet, but I mean, we're only five away, so we could just wait, and then that'll allow us to, uh, do the transfer lands to the church to get back up to the Catholic, uh, to the Catholic state. However, we would have issues again with the Second Mexican Revolution. Somebody told me that you can still avoid the revolution, though. Uh, it, you know, that there's a way to avoid it even if it fires, and, and also even if you do have it, that it's not that bad because it's, it's easy to deal with. Apparently the visions that... Uh, if fires are, are pretty easy to defeat. Uh, but I'd still prefer to avoid it if we can, unless there's some kind of positive out of it. I don't really see the point on, on doing it. Uh, but of course, we've got to get the damn stability up high enough uh, to be able to, to not have to, to deal with that. Now, of course, we could just get that long enough just to get this focus here. But at this point, it might just be easier to go down this way uh, to get the coastal uh, defense plan and, and then get to the, the march southwards. It seems almost like it'd be easier. Uh, let me see how many focuses that'd be like. One, two, three. And remember that also creates our faction, which would be really helpful. The Hispanic Alliance. And uh, maybe we can start getting South America into our faction. Um, we would really want to get Brazil in early as well because they tend to join the allies if you, you know, if, if the game gets too far. So this would be another benefit of going down this route. And you know what? I, I feel like it would probably be best to go down this route instead of this one. Uh, just to get the march south, we're looking at one, two, three, four. Uh, four focuses, while well, here we're looking at one, two, three. Uh, so yeah, we will go this way. And plus, I think, yeah, this one has a 35-day one, while these ones don't. So it's really not that bad. So of course, we're going to go with um, the 
uh, support of the veterans here. And this is going to unlock the decision to support the Spanish right. We're going to get more fascism support. And all that support is going to help us with the stability once we flip over to fascism, since we'll have higher party support. Uh, we haven't flipped yet. We'll have to take a look and see how that's looking. Um, we might even be able to do it by decision now if we wanted to, but we'll probably wait until it gets a bit higher. What else is this grant here? Uh, you know, a increased opinion with National Spain, a land doctrine, and air doctrine research. Let's see what else here. Oh, and this this turns us to the Catholic state, so that we could do this one if we wanted to. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, that's what we'll go with. Um, and we'll just have to hope that we can avoid that rebellion popping up. Can't do the anti-communist raids. Let's say we're not interested in seeing that for right now. Uh, we are currently 50% fascist. Okay. So getting up there, the unaligned support is not very high right now. It's currently at 29%. Alright, so I assume we'll be flipping to fascism soon. Uh, we can go ahead and do one of these, and I, I kind of want to do the attend the public mass again. Uh, I know we still need some stuff here, uh, but I'm really trying to get our stability dealt with. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that again and get that increased stability and get us up to 43%. Really trying to get above 50% uh, if we can. So we can see the front line here now is completely defended every province now that we added those three extra divisions there. So that's good news. And uh, uh, just hope that the Americans don't attack us. Uh, I, I don't expect to see too many issues with them, honestly, uh, this early. To get the superior firepower, so that's going to help us out in that conflict. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and get the organization for our leg infantry, which is the main thing we're using as of right now. So that'd be helpful. Could build more units. The problem still, though, is a lack of equipment here. Uh, we have a lot of infantry equipment, so what we should probably do is pull back on the infantry equipment. I do want a nice stockpile of that. Uh, but we really need to get these issues dealt with here. We got the improved computing machines that we're going to be researching faster. And let's see what we want to get next. Uh, so, yeah, not close enough to 1941, even with the research bonuses. I don't think we'll get any of those. Probably won't go down this any further until we start having some fuel issues. Uh, so don't need to worry about that. Uh, let's see what else we might want to get. Could go and get the anti-tanks, so we have that done. Could also get the light tanks, so we have that. Again, that'll be more for uh, the future. And we're already getting the mountain troops. Okay, um, so I think what we're going to do is either get the uh, light tanks or the anti-tanks. Let's do, let's go and do the anti-tanks so we have that. Yeah, and these are all things that we're going to build a bit later. Right now I'm just focusing our factories on our shortages. I think that's probably the best thing to, to focus on. While also kind of building up our air force as much as we can. Um, we do need another close air support. So let's go ahead, or we need a close air support line. So let's go ahead and put that on there. Next factory we get, we'll go towards that. Uh, so we have an election campaign. The election campaign for the next president is due to begin in the next few days. The 1933 constitutional reform was introduced in response to anger at the idea of Calles uh, becoming president for a second term. And after the outright assassination of Calles' uh, predecessor, Alvaro Obregón, who sought such a second term. This reform prevents an elected official serving twice, even if he was only an interim or provisional caretaker. This helps prevent a repeat of the por Porfiriato? Yeah, I think that's right. Porfiriato, something like that. Which saw dictator uh, Porfiero Diaz serve seven terms in a 30-year period inspired by the 1910 Mexican Revolution, plunging the country into a decade of civil strife. This law has the benefit of making patronage networks outside the party more difficult to sustain, but also prevents officials being directly accountable to electors as they will move to a different tier of government after their term, making them reliant on patronage within the party. So we can do the, this constitutional reform is essential for the stability of the country. And then we get like a successor, or we say ridiculous, we lose uh, some uh, stability uh, and then politics will change. Public elections will no longer be held and the PNR takes over. Uh, so let me just take a look and see. This is the PNR uh, that we have right now and they become the ruling party. Uh, they're currently the ruling party. Let's do this constitutional reform here and see what happens. Uh, with our, our current ruler. Also, one thing I wanted to show, I meant to show this early on here, I changed the name of our intelligence agency based on one of your guys' suggestion to the DFS. That was their first intelligence agency, which I, I think it was until 1947, I believe, what he, is what he told me. Uh, so, 
of course, it wouldn't be formed yet. Uh, but yeah, this is their intelligence agency. Some people also say it's like a secret police. And in Spanish, this is essentially the Federal Security Directorate. Uh, so change that up and also give him a snake because somebody said I should make it a snake or uh, the eagle since it fits more with Metzko. So I changed that up uh, and, you know, changed their name. And I think it's a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, so we have the PNR successor event. Uh, and this, of course, is the successor to our current president, Lazaro Cardenas. Let's see who we want to pick here. And, and they're all going to be non-aligned. Uh, so we're just picking a new leader for the non-aligned party. And you'll notice that they all have different bonuses, which is nice because our, our current leader doesn't even have a bonus at all. Uh, so we're not giving anything up. Uh, so we can get the Revolutionary General. And you see the bonus is there. Not really going to help us much. Yeah, not going to help us much. Uh, new stability would be nice. Uh, so we might go with the gentleman president. Or we can go with or with the general, say, Dio. And that's going to give us that uh, political power gain plus division recovery rate, which I think would probably be the best thing to get. Yeah, let's go ahead and get, say, Dio. And I don't know if that'll cause any problems because I think he's supposed to become the fascist leader. I might have just messed that up. <laughs> we, we could have messed that up. I'm not entirely sure how this will work now when we take that one event. Uh, that one focus, excuse me. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens there, guys. Hopefully I didn't mess it up because I wanted this guy to be our leader uh, when we become fascist. So I'm really hoping it didn't uh, get dicked up there. I suppose we'll see. Uh, maybe that was a bad choice, uh, picking him. All right, so we've gotten this fo uh, focus knocked out, and now we have a choice between going between uh, these two, since this one's for the, the communist direction. This allows us to create our own factions. It does give us some political power, stability, and war support. But again, I do want to go with the Hispanic Alliance. Yeah, I think that would be nice to go for. Uh, so this is going to create our, our faction, the Hispanic Alliance. It unlocks a bunch of decisions related to it uh, that hopefully will allow us to get other countries into it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this decision here. Uh, or excuse me, this focus. Also, we could have went uh, with the Crusade Against Atheism, and that would have changed us, our ruling party. Uh, could have done that first. I almost think we should do that one first just to get it knocked out. You know what, I think we're gonna go ahead and do that one. We can, we can go ahead and cancel this. It, it, it saves the days here, it's not wasting any time. So you know what, let's go ahead and go for this one first, guys. I think it would be good to get that. I wanna see who the leader's gonna end up being. Cause I'm kinda worried that I picked the wrong leader. I mean, once we find out who it is, if it is the wrong leader, and if they end up giving me somebody else instead of the general because of me picking him for the uh, not a line leader, there's not much that I can do about it if I know that it's a problem, but it would be nice to know. Uh, and are these guys repairing? What are they doing? Huh. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where he's not going back. That heavy cruiser that we have. Uh, going back out there. All right, they're going now. Okay. Just make sure that our ships continue training, getting that, that Navy experience for whenever we are ready uh, to, to start working on the, the Navy. And again, it's not gonna be a huge focus uh, in this one. So we get the improved artillery uh, and still very much in 1940. Could go ahead and continue moving down like these to get the, the passive bonuses. But again, passive bonuses are something we don't have. I don't think would be wise. I think we should go ahead and get the, the light tanks so that when we want to build those, we'll have the most recent model for them. I think that'd be good. Fascism on the rise. So we could say we need a referendum and this would in fact put them in power. It would cost a hundred uh, political power, and we're doing the focus that is already going to change this up. So I don't think we should do that. So let's just do this, and then hope we don't have any issues before we get the crusade against atheism. Which we'll have that in about 50-something days here. Trotsky survived the assassination attempt. Interesting. So yeah, he's going to still be in our country. Um, they, they, they did not succeed at that. Uh, now, I don't think we'll ever see anything on Trotsky again, because you know we didn't go communist. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, it is interesting. So do we not have the, yeah, we do have the second maximum revolution getting ready to fire. Uh, stability still really low. And it's 111 days before we start getting some events related to that. When do we get this focus here? In 30 more days, so about a month. So we should have it uh, before we go to war here, which would be good. I would like to have our domestic issues dealt with before we start that conflict. Uh, we do have the decisions available. I think we should go ahead and, and continue to increase our stability. Of course, we could always 
uh, go ahead and, and try and get rid of this. But it's 103 days. Let's see what happens after we take that focus and go fascist. Yeah, it seems that it can still fire as long as you're not communist. Uh, but yeah, let's try and get the stability up again. This is, uh, stability is a problem, man. 37% now. Uh, we had gotten it up to like 42 or 45%. Yeah, but now it's dropped again. Uh, Pakistan has capitulated immediately after they come, they became a country. Uh, so that's strange. And it looks like the war here is almost over. Uh, if it isn't already. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, of course it did start the conflict between the Comintern and the Allies, so that was kind of the main result of that, that civil war in, uh, India. Well, as far as getting these guys trained, we almost have them there. They're about halfway to, uh, regular after starting at green. Uh, we have civilian factories open. Okay, so, are we still down, we, we should probably build another civilian factory. Uh, we have a nice 70% there. Uh, yeah, we still haven't gotten where we have, because of trading, of course where we have a full line building. Uh, so we should probably get another civilian factory. They do take a little while to build, but that's okay. You know, we're gonna keep losing those because of trade. We're gonna continue needing trade resources. We did get the Crusade Against Atheism. Excellent. Um, so, did that result? Yes, that did result in us changing our flag. Uh, this is the special fascist flag. They have, uh, Mexico has a different flag uh, for if they go with this more, you know, kind of theocratic route. Um, you know, this more religious route. Uh, they have different flags, whether they're fascist, not aligned, or, or, or whatever. So, uh, that's, uh, pretty cool. I think Mexico now has, like, a total, like, seven or eight different flags they can have. And we actually do have him as the leader, so that's kind of a bummer. Uh, he increases war support, but I'd much rather would have had the general in charge. It's kind of a shame that that didn't, didn't happen. I, I almost feel like it didn't happen because, and, and it could, we could have something fire here. Uh, but I think it didn't happen because I picked that event. Uh, I picked that leader. Uh, I feel like that's probably what happened. Uh, I messed it up. Yeah, because I think it should have picked Cedillo as our leader. Uh, but because he was the leader of the non-aligned, yeah, that's a shame. Uh, I wish I hadn't messed that up because I think he would have been a better leader. War support is nice, but it, you, always, you get it up to 100% easily enough. Uh, so that's a real bummer because that was a, a much better bonus with the division recovery rate. Yeah, so... That was my bad, guys. I shouldn't have done that. But whatever. Nothing to do about it now. Let's go and go with the Hispanic Alliance now. But yeah, real shame. Because uh, I would like to have him as a leader. That's the main reason why I supported him, in fact. Is so that he could be our leader. Uh, but so, yeah. Kind of a bummer. Maybe something else will happen. Probably not, though. I don't think there'll be anything that's going to happen. I think this is this is going to be our, our leader permanently now. So, again, kind of a shame. All right, so we have finished justifying the war. Uh, let's go ahead and declare war. Uh, again, I don't expect the Americans will be able to, to do anything just yet. Uh, we can't see what they've gotten so far. Uh, here's the the branch. Where the hell is that? It's here in the war plans. Yeah, here's the branch. Reaffirm, reaffirm Monroe Doctrine. Uh, they're currently working on the Maritime Commission. But I don't think they've gotten it yet, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so let's go and declare war. And this, again, should be a fairly easy conflict. And, of course, it's just helping us get our general more experienced, get our troops a little bit more experienced. And they'll attack us there. We did get an invite to the faction. I thought we created our own faction. Did Oh, we're doing that with this one. Never mind. Uh, so because we are fascists, the, Germany's, uh, the Germany's, uh, Germany has invited us to their faction. But, again, we do not want to join their faction. Uh, we are, of course, going to create our own our own faction. I like creating my own faction. I prefer being the leader of my faction if I if I can. Uh, let's go ahead and have. Let's go ahead and split these. Split them in half. Have well, you know what? Well, that's the capital. I think we will have to attack the capital, won't we? Yeah, we'll have to attack the capital. I was gonna say let's avoid attacking in the mountains, but uh, yeah, no real way to do that. It, it's one or two divisions though, so it's not that big of a problem. Now we vastly outnumber them, and, and they're pretty weak anyway from us defeating them here. No, it's just a matter of moving over here, and then we should get the win. We got the uh, Toad Anti-Tanks. Excellent. Uh, so we'll better build those whenever we're ready to do so, uh, which, of course, is not now. Uh, let's see what we want to get next. We could get the uh, logistic companies. Eventually, I, I assume that we will want those. Mainly what the... Uh, the main things we'd be getting here 
It's stuff for the future. Let's go ahead and do the, uh, get the, the naval bombers. So we'll have those. Again, just something for the future. Uh, but we will want to build those well before the war. Uh, and what did we get here? We got the toad anti tanks. That's right. Uh, we will want to build those well before the war, obviously. All right, so let's get this capital taken and get this war finished up here. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and put them onto this front now. And I don't know that we'll actually be doing this war, uh, this one here. I kind of feel like just um, of waiting at this point. You know, we gained a little bit of land, uh, and that's what's important. Uh, and good God, look at all the stuff they had here. That was way more stuff than I thought they had. Like they got four military factories, four civilian factories, three dockyards, uh, and that's one advantage of waiting too. Is we let them use those those uh, generic focuses that they have to build stuff in their territories. So that's one of the advantages of waiting. We get a lot more stuff overall. So yeah, we'll, we're going to wait to attack them for a little bit uh, and let them build up. And and uh, we, we've got a bunch of stuff now, so that's good. Uh, as far as how much uh, this is costing us, our garrison support, how much uh, manpower we need, it's about a little over 2,000 manpower, plus all the equipment and stuff for them as well. Still lacking. we got a couple things done here. Uh, we did get a bunch of infantry equipment from both of these wars. I think that's the reason why we're so stacked up on it. Uh, we did get the mountain infantry. Let's go ahead and take their one state. And then get a new tech selected. Uh, so could, could go over the next ones to get that bonus. Uh, again, I mean, I suppose just getting passive bonuses is where it's at right now for us. Uh, so let's go and get that. Okay, we don't actually have the mountain troops, but we could go ahead and, and build them and design them because we have the army experience. Uh, and I kind of want to do like a 40 width. Like these are be our really, really good troops. It means that we probably won't be able to get very many. Uh, maybe just one. <sighs> yeah, maybe we should just go at 20 width initially because I don't know that we'd ever be able to get these uh, anytime soon because remember how many you can get is based off of... Uh, uh, is based off of how many total divisions you have. Uh, so right now we're looking at 35 experience, so we should be able to add all this stuff to them. We'll get the uh, engineer companies that need to get support artillery since uh, they won't be getting regular artillery. We'll get them the field hospitals as well. And it looks like that's all we have experience for. Okay, let's go and save that. And as far as training one up, I suppose we can go get one training. Yeah, uh, since they don't need that much support equipment. Uh, we could even add another one to them. So we could actually get 40 widths. We could get one of them anyways, uh, if we wanted to. Let's go ahead and deprioritize a little bit. Just build one. Yeah, we could uh, could build a, a 40 width if we had the experience. We do not. Let's just wait before we get another one building. We'll just build the one for right now. So we'll have those guys. I think this will be really helpful here in the mountains, particularly here in the American Southwest. You know, you have all the, the, the mountains in America and Arizona. Uh, and of course in New Mexico here, which is very mountainous and then up on the borders of Texas just right here The rest of Texas is very flat I lived in Texas for several years, and it's exactly how it is. It's incredibly flat could start building a ship up I don't think we have much in, when it comes to ships. We are very good on convoys though So let's take a look and see what we could build uh, Oops, that's wrong button here and just see what we got. Uh, since we haven't researched them, we have early destroyers. I'm trying to see if we have like a level, eh, it's all pretty old. So we can get the heavy cruisers here, which I assume are pretty garbage and probably not worth building. Or the, the cruddy destroyers. Now we do have the experience to change these up, um, but we don't have any equipment that we've researched for them, with a few exceptions. We have the anti-air. There's no, I mean, you have to have the fire control on there, I suppose. We don't have torpedoes. We don't have, yeah, we really don't have much of anything here, guys. Could put more anti-air on these. Yeah, I guess there's really no point. Yeah, there's really no point on building these. They're just so cruddy that they would be useless. It's just a, a waste of manpower. Until we, uh, you know, research something. We are lacking in rubber. I suppose we'll eventually need it, so I might as well trade for it. Uh, would trade with Brazil, but they'll only give us six, so we'll get ripped off. So we'll just have to trade with the Dutch East Indies. We're never going to get the 15 civilian factories. Uh, but I don't want it to impact our, our planes and our, our motorized, so I think it would be good to uh, to get that. Again, we don't have a war goal on there, and I don't think we're going to either. Not for right now, guys. We need a lot of stuff. 
and lets them, uh, you know, build build up their their state. So our agent was killed. And finally, that allow us to finally get a new agent. We'll get one in in 30 days. And I think that's actually where we're going to end today's episode, guys. Uh, so we did make a good amount of time here, and we got some new territory conquered pretty easily. Uh, and let's just take a look, see what everybody's working on around the world. So they're doing the Lend Lease Act. Let's take a look at the Germans. Yeah, that's right. We're not going to be able to see what any of the fascists are doing, but we'll take a look at all the allies. Uh, motorized army, I, I bet we won't be able to see. Yeah, I can't see them either, or Japan for that matter. Uh, we'll be able to take a look at the allies, see what they're all working on. And that's right. Uh, Australia left. Well, they haven't left yet, but yeah, they, they went fascist. Okay, so they went a little bit different than I thought they were going to do. I thought they were going to go like more, you know, they'd be democratic, but more towards uh, uh, America rather than Britain. That is not what ended up happening. They're supporting an Indo Indonesian uprising. So Asia and uh, Australia and the Pacific region overall is just uh, yeah, very fascist, very much in fascist control here. Uh, but they are still in the Allies, so that's something to consider. Take a look at New Zealand. Yeah, just ally, just you know, in the Allies, democratic, pretty standard here. Uh, South Africa is also going fascist. Interesting. Okay. Is there anybody else to look at? I guess Canada. Take a look at them. And I think that's it. I suppose we could look at France here. It doesn't really matter since France is essentially gone now. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the end of today's episode. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, uh, which will uh, be on Wednesday. And I'm, I'm loving that we got the, the Catholic Mexico here. And, and our color changed too. Uh, I noticed that and I didn't say anything, but yeah, the colors changed and uh, we have a Catholic Mexico. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys on the next episode, and thanks for watching.